What is good everyone? Stefan with Mind Your Movement here and today I want to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart because of my experience with it and I know it will strike a chord within you as well if you train at any level whether you were formerly an athlete, you currently compete as an athlete, or you're just really passionate about health and fitness and you want to be active in any way, shape, or form. And if you fall into one of these categories, I know that you have experienced or you're currently experiencing the pain and injury cycle. So what do I mean by that? It's essentially this cycle of feeling some kind of discomfort, tightness, pain within your body and letting it compile to the point where you sustain an injury. This injury holds you back from training, holds you back from competing, holds you back from doing whatever the hell it is with your body. And so you have to stop. And so some people enter a rehab phase here and they'll do certain exercises, certain protocols to get them back to playing sport. And so once they rest or they do these protocols and they see a little bit of daylight, the smallest bit of decrease in their pain, the slightest bit of increase in functionality and progress in terms of their injury, they'll go straight back to training without moderating the intensity, the load, or really changing anything about their training, just going right back into it as they were doing before they got injured. And this philosophy and this, this cycle in general is just so flawed because over time, what happens is, sure, you feel good enough to go back to sport and play, but what ends up happening is that you end up back injured again. And so I see this in two ways. You either sustain another injury to another part of your body because your body was simply compensating in a different way to make up for the poorly rehabbed structure or whatever um, part of your body that had some kind of damage or sustained some kind of injury your body comp now compensates in a different way to protect this spot, placing more load, more stress, and injuring a new area. That's one way that I see re-injury occurring in this vicious cycle. And the second thing I see in terms of returning to injury is simply re-injuring the same location or the same structure of the body that you injured in the first place, whether it gets worse than it was before or your recovery progress is set back um, partially. And so you're stuck in this pain injury cycle because you lack patience. You lack patience to build the proper foundation that is necessary to keep your body pain and injury free, to reach your genetic potential, and to just find more fulfillment and joy in whatever it is that you're doing. And so in this video, I want to give you the three major areas that I worked on to completely shift the way that my body operates to allow me to be bulletproof and train longer, log more quality training hours and really reach the pinnacle of my performance in whatever regard in terms of fitness and athletic capabilities. Digging a little deeper into the nature of the cycle, before we actually go over the three key areas that are gonna allow you to break out of it. So what I see is that people are constantly burying themselves into the ground. They're just running them, their, themselves and their bodies into the dirt because they continue to compile this pain, this injury, and it all just compounds until you get to the point where you have to have a surgery, where you get an injury so bad that now it's time to have surgery because the structural damage is irreversible. And a classic example of this is an ACL tear. And what you will oftentimes see is that somebody gets the surgery, they go to PT, and they get their VMO strength up, they stand on one leg for 30 seconds, they do a couple hops on that leg, and then the PT is like, all right, you're good to go, you're back to sport. 
And the problem with this is that there's no real bridge between those PT exercises that you did and your actual sports specific training. There's a huge gap that lies there. And it's just so crazy to think that we trust people who haven't actually done what we're trying to do uh, with improving, with helping us. And you see this in terms of business. You see people teaching business at these big business schools that don't necessarily run successful businesses themselves. You see uh, founders of meditation apps like Calm, for instance, that dude is far from being a meditation expert. You see people, and so to sum this up, an analogy that I often like to give is, you see somebody on the street, right? You want to ride a bike. You see a random kid on the street, 16-year-old kid riding the bike. He's real good with it, does some tricks even. And then you have this PhD candidate for bicycle riding mechanics. <laughs> uh, which one are you going to choose to learn how to ride a bike? Which one are you going to choose to teach you how to ride a bike? The answer is obvious, but what's unfortunate is that we don't take this same logical thinking to other areas of life, like the ones that I just mentioned. These physical therapists that we entrust the rehabilitation of our bodies with, they've had their noses buried in books that were written by other people who had their noses buried in books instead of actually going out there, testing the limits and capabilities of their bodies and recovering, rehabbing in whatever ways that was necessary based on the experiments that they found within themselves. And so because of this, you see that the industry is very fragmented. You have the surgeon, you have the physical therapist, you have a strength and conditioning coach or a personal trainer. They have very little, if any, communication that's going on between them in regards to recovering you and getting you back up to speed to play sport. It doesn't really work the way that they think it does. You can't just do these random exercises, strengthen a couple muscles real quick around the injured area, and then get thrown right back into training. This needs to be a more integrated approach. And really, the best way to integrate it is to empower yourself, understand how to rebuild your body from the ground up and really solidify that foundation that's going to allow you to progress continually in terms of your performance training wise, athletic wise, uh, and really just build, just, just make your body bulletproof. That is the key, uh, or that is what we're striving for, is to make your body bulletproof. Anything that you throw at it, it will recover from. Anything that you throw at it, it will be able to adapt to. And so this is something that we must learn to do for ourselves. We can't depend on any fitness professionals, any surgeons, any healthcare practitioners. We can't depend on these people when it comes to building this foundation because at the end of the day, you are your own best coach. You know what is going on inside of you and how, the, the, how everything works internally. Nobody can tell you what to do with your body besides you. And so you must become your own professional, your own healthcare professional, your own fitness professional in this sense. And these three major areas will allow you to do this. And so without further ado, I'll get into those. So the first one is breath. Breathing is so overlooked when it comes to optimizing the function of the body and the mind. And the reason why is because people oftentimes associate the core with only providing stability for the body, providing a smooth transfer of energy from upper to lower body and vice versa. But they forget that the core's primary function, the function that allows us to live day in and day out, is facilitating breath. 
And so each and every core muscle, even the ones that seem to be more superficial, seem to be more aesthetic based or functional, whatever that means based, um, even those ones like the rectus abdominis, the six pack, even that group of core muscles is contributing to your breathing patterns in some way. And so the problem with our core work, the way that people incorporate core training into their regimens is that they have no focus on breath. How does that make sense if one of the core's primary roles is to facilitate breath? How can you properly train the core if you're not incorporating some kind of intentionality in, in terms of your breath into your core training? It's not possible. And so the, the key here is really being intentional as you're doing core work and allowing that core work to bridge into any other exercise you're doing, whether that's lifting, barbell squatting, deadlifting, you're, you're doing a bench press. A lot of people, they completely forget about core engagement and they really just focus on the superficial muscles. They'll focus on what are my thighs doing? What are, what are my, my calves doing? What are my, uh, my, my biceps doing? And they forget that movement originates from the core. And so the breathing muscles are the core of the core. Muscles like the diaphragm, the pelvic floor, the transversus abdominis, intercostals. These are muscles that we must directly train, but oftentimes they're so overlooked and undertrained because of the lack of intentionality with our core training, with movement in general. And so by incorporating full breaths into your core training, for instance, you're doing a plank, and instead of just holding this plank for time, you actually hold this plank for a number of breaths. Starting with the exhale, you completely squeeze all the air out of your lungs, trying to really get to the bottom, the most deep, the depths of your lungs to squeeze as much air out as possible. And when you do this, you can do this even just sitting down right here as we speak you will feel an immense amount of core activation that you probably haven't felt before or that you very rarely felt before. Maybe you feel this when you laugh or when you cough or when you sneeze, but being more intentional about it will allow you to tap into muscle fibers through the core that you probably haven't felt before. And so after you do that exhale, you wanna maintain that core engagement as you let the air come in reflexively. What a lot of people will do is try and pull, pull in the air in a forceful way instead of allowing the breath to happen reflexively. And that's the key here. Understanding that the exhale is the active portion of breath and that the inhale just happens reflexively because of the elastic nature of the lungs and the pressure differential between the atmosphere and inside of our lungs. This just happens reflexively. We don't have to force it. But when we do force it because we feel like we need more air, then we actually get into the secondary breathing muscles and they end up taking over the movement and we lose engagement uh, in those uh, in those more primary breathing muscles. And essentially, we just lose proper core activation and alignment. And this causes us to suffer in all of the other movements that we do, whether it's that lifting, whether it's running, whether it's sprinting, jumping. It all starts from how you just sit. It all starts from how you just are resting. Are you able to maintain that core alignment and engagement and fill it up properly, create that correct internal pressure with good breathing mechanics? So that's why breath is the number one major area that you must focus on to build yourself this proper foundation and take control of your performance. 
Going on to number two here is strengthening. And I don't even really like using the word strengthening. I like more so waking up, activating, gaining control and awareness of the foot and ankle complex. And this one is so hugely overlooked because we have these cushiony, over supportive shoes on our feet for most of the day. And so you'll see over time, or you can see over time that our shoes have become more and more and more supportive and complex and cushiony. And the technology within our, within our shoes has gotten so much more advanced. And we'll see, and Born to Run is a great book on this topic. They talk specifically about this and how Nike basically ruined uh, runners in terms of just increasing the level of um, or the number of running injuries. But do some research on that on your own time. Uh, essentially, these shoes, as they get more complex, they are taking away the need for our feet and ankles to support themselves. And so these structures over time get really weak and we lose control over them. We lose awareness of them. It's like we don't even feel that our feet are there. Our feet are actually designed to be just as docile as our hands. But what happens is because, again, they're stuck in these shoes, we lose sensation to them and they become numb. We can't feel them anymore. We can't feel them and because of that, we can't activate them anymore. Because we can't activate them anymore, the rest of our chain upstream of the feet, which is the whole body, is essentially compromised in its function. Why? Because fascia connects our whole entire body. And when one part is lacking in activation. That is a kink in the chain, so to speak, which affects every other part of your body. And so there are studies on this that you can look up to when the feet aren't activated properly, you're going to see a decrease in glute activation. And this is a, a whole concept of foot to core activation that Dr. Emily Splickle of Naboso actually um, really made popular. And this is something that I intuitively understand as I was getting on this journey is basically the, in, the connection that we feel between our feet and our core. Really understanding how to master these two areas and then feel how the movement and activation of one affects the movement and activation of the other uh, is really the idea here. And so by strengthening our feet and ankles and really gaining control and awareness back to them, we can provide the rest of our body with the proper foundation to sit on. And so that's why this is key number two, is remediating your foot and ankle mechanics. Area number three is one that many people will write off, but it is gaining more and more traction in the industry, which I love to see, and it is strengthening the mind. Sure, you can train the physical capabilities all you want, but if you never train your mind, which is a very important part of your vessel, I think that goes without saying, like, it, it's just the two are so intricately connected that it wouldn't make sense to tackle one with it without tackling the other and that's what i see all the time people have these really strong bodies even olympic level athletes they have these amazingly functional bodies in a physical sense but when it comes to their minds they got all this anxiety going on they got depression they have all sorts of mental imbalance that ultimately doesn't allow them to maximize their whole entire being uh, in the way that they can. It really stops you from achieving the genetic potential that is within you. And so if you have all these thoughts buzzing around your head, these negative thoughts, these thoughts that really just aren't in alignment with who you want to be and the goals that you have, 
you're going to constantly be in this place where you're doing a little bit of work, but then you're sabotaging yourself and going back to the beginning, or you just are zigzagging all over the place. And really the main component here is focus. If you don't have that level of focus, not only in a micro sense, like as you're doing a specific exercise within a specific workout, but also in a macro sense, in terms of staying consistent with the fundamental actions that are going to get you to where you want to go. People make this stuff so complex. It's like just pick a few movements, get really good at them, and see your performance increase. That's all this is. That's really what training is all about. And sure, you can incorporate some fun and some variability in there sometimes, but the way you do one movement is the way you do everything else. And so there is this aspect of motor learning here. So you have to do a certain task and the specificities of that task to actually learn how to do it. But to a great degree, we can actually improve our, our motor learning plasticity in this sense, basically our potential to learn new skills, new movements, new things to do with our bodies by getting really good at a few movements. So that means if you're a basketball player, you can actually learn so much by learning how to refine the hell out of your squatting mechanics. You can become a better runner. You can become a better jumper. You could actually get better at the skill of basketball itself because the hips are so crucial to anything that you want to do athletically. And so by targeting those and learning how to optimize the function through those on a very deep level, you're actually able to excel in multiple different areas, not just the squat. And that hip function will also transfer to other exercises, other um, compound movements, other movement patterns. And so this is what I'm talking about here. So I digressed a little bit, but really staying focused to see those critical actions, those critical movement patterns that you must do over time to get better. And I see this all the time. People lose focus so easily. They get distracted by all these shiny uh, objects, all these new modalities, all these state of the art technologies and implements and ways to work out. They forget the most foundational principles. And so by staying focused, you can avoid all of this. You can just do your thing, hone in on your craft, by doing those simple basics. And so that is why training the mind to be more focused on a micro and a macro level is so important because it's gonna save you time. It's gonna make your work more efficient. And so now speaking in terms of actual exercises on that micro level, being able to focus and tune into that exercise, being able to connect to every single piece of your body, every single cell, every single particle of your being. Being able to connect to that is invaluable when it comes to enhancing your movement, um, just upping your movement quality and, and setting that strong foundation for yourself. Because the better you can do that, the better you're going to be able to control your body. The prerequisite for control is a strong awareness. And so by connecting the mind and the body, we're able to do whatever the hell our mind tells our body to do on a very intricate level. And so in, a, in essence, we up our body control by upping our, our mind, by training the mind and enhancing our levels of focus, we're able to actually up our levels of body control. And this is a huge thing. There's a ton of studies on this as well. People with more body control are less susceptible to injuries. 
and the places, the, the individual areas within your body where you may not feel body, uh, where you may not be uh, exercising as much body control, those are the areas that are more susceptible uh, to injury within your body. And so in summary, in order to build this foundation that you need in order to continually advance your performance and stay pain and injury free, stay plateau free, you need to focus on these three major areas, your breathing, your feet, and your mind. By focusing on these three areas, it's possible to achieve whatever the hell it is we want to do with our body, not only in a training and fitness sense, but also in the grand scheme of life. The more optimized your vessel is, the easier it's going to be to manifest and create whatever it is that you desire. Because our, our vessel is the only means that we have to make our mind reality. It's not luck. It's because of what you do internally, your internal workings and how you leverage that to make things happen. And so if you see the importance of working on these three major areas to build yourself a bulletproof foundation and enhance yourself to that next level of performance, book a call with me today and we'll see if you're the right fit for Mind Your Movement. We work on these things constantly. I drill them within my clients and I always make sure, hey guys, did you do this actionable item? Did you do your standing meditation? Hey guys, did you do your breathing light exercise? Hey guys, did you do your foot and ankle exercises for the day? And so I'm constantly just giving them that accountability that I wish I had when I was in their shoes to just stay consistent with those basics because sure, willpower, is really strong in some people and willpower can drive us to do a lot of things. But at the end of the day, that coaching and accountability that one can uh, really, coaching and accountability can really allow you to move to that next level because willpower only goes so far. Motivation only goes so far. Just ask anybody who's really successful at what they do. I guarantee you they had a coach or a mentor in some capacity. And so if you're ready to take that leap, you're going to come out of this consultation session with a completely free strategy to get to your goals. Whether you decide to work with me or not is up to you. Never any pressure or stress from my end. And I really just wanna make sure that you have the keys to understand what it is that you need to progress yourself. Book a call with me today and we'll figure out if Mind Your Movement is the right fit for you. See you guys next time.